FB2A Buccaneer was a scout bomber of the US Armed Forces during World War II. The aircraft is relatively unknown, as only a few hundred were produced. However, this aircraft basically ended the Brewster Aeronautical Corporation and is considered to be the worst Allied aircraft of World War II, and that title alone makes it worth a look. In 1939, the US Navy was looking for a new larger scout bomber that could operate from aircraft carriers. The Brewster company made its own suggestion, the SB-2A Buccaneer. The aircraft was based on the SBA, which was an unlucky aircraft of which only 40 were produced and that never saw combat. The technical specifications of the SB-2A weren't too bad. The improved version SB-2A2 had a crew of two, and a radial engine with 1700 horsepower. The top speed was 441 km per hour. The range was 2696 km, its service ceiling 7590 meters. The aircraft was armed with two 12.7 mm machine guns in the hull, two 7.62 mm machine guns in the wings, and two 7.62 mm machine guns as defensive weapons aft. The bomb load was limited to 450 kilograms, but the aircraft was a scout bomber, an armed reconnaissance plane, not a purebred bomber. From a technical viewpoint, it was okay. So how come it has such a bad reputation? The prototype had its first flight on June 17, 1941, a few months before the USA entered World War II. The prototype was faster and more agile than the production variant, but it lacked weaponry and armor. Also, some problems had to be solved. All that increased weight and decreased performance to the values I just presented. Still orders came in. The French government wanted 250 aircraft. After France was occupied by the Wehrmacht, the British took over that order and increased it to 500. The Dutch government also wanted the aircraft, 162 exactly, at least before the Germans came. Australia ordered 243 and the US Navy wanted 140 aircraft. However, the Brewster company proved to be incapable of actually delivering these planes. The company had blown up from a small aircraft part manufacturer to an industry giant in just a few years. Company management was unable to keep up with that. Additionally, the sales team Alfred and Ignacio Miranda were criminals who had already spent time in jail because of fraud and illegal weapons trafficking. The enormous growth had also caused a problem with the workers. They were less and less skilled and motivated. This led to frequent strikes and a very bad production quality. Early on, Brewster still had a good reputation as they had built the F-2A Buffalo before the war, a solid and successful fighter aircraft. But that good reputation was ruined quickly. First, the US Navy reacted cautiously and tried to solve the issue with small corrections within the company, but that didn't work. On April 18, 1942, the US Navy simply took over the company and put it under military control. During summer of 1944, the Navy released the company without giving her any more production orders, which ultimately led to the collapse of Brewster in April of 1946. The chaos caused the Buccaneer to be produced slowly and with unacceptably low quality. The Australian government cancelled its order in favor of the Vulci Vengeance. The Buccaneers that finally arrived at the Royal Air Force, US Navy and US Army Air Force were so shoddy that for a while sabotage was considered to be the most likely cause. The Royal Air Force considered the aircraft to be unfit for combat, so the British used them as target tugs only. The US Army Air Force came to the same conclusion and only used the Buccaneer for ground training and as artillery training targets. The aircraft was even unsuitable for basic flight training. The US Navy also used the aircraft only for ground training and as a target tug. Most Buccaneers that arrived at the Royal Air Force, US Army Air Force and US Navy were scrapped before entering service. Only the US Marines actually used the aircraft. The planes that were originally produced for the Netherlands were taken over by the Marines and used in the 531st Squadron as night fighters. The originally acceptable flight characteristics were reduced by the shoddy quality of the planes and were now far below what was required in the years 1942 to 44. 
A complete SB2A can be seen in the National Museum of Naval Aviation at the Naval Air Station Pensacola in Florida. Another one is in storage on the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. All others of the 771 SB2As were probably scrapped a long time ago. Considering the horrible career of this aircraft, this doesn't come as a surprise. Many aircraft have a difficult beginning. Some have a problematic career and are never loved by pilots or ground crew, but most are actually used. An aircraft has to be catastrophically bad in order for it to be directly transported from the production facility to the scrapyard during a war. Thanks for your attention and until next time.